Hello everyone, this is RPA Fridays number 30. Uh, we have a little series on modern design experience activities. This is a part number four, Check Upstate activity. That's what I will be talking about. Allow me a little introduction of myself. My name is Roman and I'm from Robot ICT company and I'm ready to automate you um, what you need and help you with your automation projects. Also, I take care about trainings and um, proud to be UiPath Community MVP of 2022. If you like the video, please give it a like or consider subscription. If you have any technical or non-technical questions, please type them in a comment. And now to the point. So uh, I will show you today how to work and how uh, useful is this check up state activity. This is activity that uh, actually replaced activities from classic experience activities like element exist and wait element disappear and maybe a few others you will see i will show you a little uh, comparison so without further talking let's dig and dive into it so i have an empty um, process here and i want to tell you a little bit about checkup state so we can use this activity inside the use application slash browser scope but also we can use it without it this is like ex exception because we were talking about click activity type into activity and others they all need to reside in use application slash browser scope but check app state is a little exception from the new activities it can go solo it can work only as a um, self activity placed outside uh, without using the use application slash browser scope and that's what i want to show you today so you will remember that on that so let me drag and drop the check app state activity in there and see how it looks so on a first look you kind of get an idea what's going on uh, of course, we need to indicate some target, so that will be the element or that we will be actually looking for or maybe we want to check if the element appears or disappear and then based on if it appears or disappear, there are two scopes where we can drop activities that we need, for example, click or whatever you need. So uh, I will demonstrate it on uh, checking one uh, button on our website. So let's check it out. So I will go ahead and indicate target on screen. That's this button there. This will minimize the UiPath Studio and whatever was behind it, uh, it will pop up. Of course, you can hit F2 in case you want to navigate the indication somewhere else. So this is our website and I want to check if this little um, link book RPA demo is present because maybe we'll be checking it in case it will magically disappear. And I don't want to do that because we want to have this link there so I'll click that now having all these possibilities to adjust selector fuzzy selector this has been all covered in the previous videos so make sure to check them here I will just click confirm and there we go we have the element indicated so what next we can set up we can change wait for to element to appear or element to disappear so this conveniently can work as wait element vanish activity when you were waiting for some element to disappear. Uh, so you can use both and then the branches are like target appears and target does not appear. So in case you want to perform some action when the target is uh, there, you drop, the, drop it there in the sequence and vice versa. Uh, here is seconds means that the timeout element exists has 30 seconds timeout here the default is five seconds and keep in mind that in all modern activities we use seconds not milliseconds so if you want to override it for example 10 30 seconds you just type in uh, the number like this usually if you are really sure that the element you are waiting for uh, will appear and you're not sure how long it will take maybe sometimes it takes a minute sometimes it takes two minutes you know for example waiting for some report to load mm -hmm. then you can put any even crazy um, wait time, I don't know, 300 seconds. And anytime the element will appear, uh, the flow will continue. Of course, if it, the element will not appear, then it will wait for 300 seconds. Now, as you see for demonstration, I put a log message in each of the branches. Um, but if you like to have it elegant, you can also, and if you use only one activity, you can also do it like this. Cut, delete, click, paste cut delete click paste see much more elegant but only if you are using just one activity inside if you want to use more of them uh, it will be enclosed in sequence now I went a little bit back and I want to show you one more thing and that's this button toggle branches 
which can hide or show some of these possibilities that you want or maybe you don't want to use. Uh, it's not really technically important, but it will make your workflow look cleaner and more elegant. So as a last step, I want to explore the properties a little bit with you. So if you take a look in your properties, there are pretty much everything is as you uh, already saw in the previous parts with modern design experience activities. So I want to just target those that are new for us. Yeah, the whole target section is already familiar for us. There is the selector, fuzzy selector and so on. And so we don't have to cover it now. Input output element, delay before display name and so on. Um, this all can be set it up, you know about, you know that. One important interesting option is check visibility. So for example, for web browser automation, you can have some elements that exist on the website but are hidden. So um, the selector will be found, the element will be found, but the thing is actually not present. So in case you want to uh, work with that behavior, you can uh, tick this checkbox, check visibility, and this will make sure that we're only looking for uh, some element to appear if it's really visible, if it has um, if it's present and visible for the user. So this is a useful uh, tick box. And then maybe one little thing, if you want to save the state of the, uh, the result of the uh, check app state to a Boolean variable, same as you maybe uh, did with uh, uh, element exist, you can also do it here. So now take a look at this little um, workflow where I'm having some uh, check app state activity. I do have to log message based on the outcome of uh, the first check app state activity. Let's go back in history and let's see how this is done in classic activities and compare it. So in the classic activities, it looks like this. You would go and use element exist activity. This activity also has a timeout actually here, timeout, that is by default 30 seconds. The result of this activity is a Boolean, which we have to store in a variable. If you have lots of these element exist activities in your workflow, you will get to have a lot of variables. So see, I need to have a variable to store the result and then use another activity, if, to actually check the variable if it's true or false and uh, based on that perform specific actions then or else. So what is the advantage of the modern design check app state that it can replace a few activities, stack all together and provide the sequences and let's say the blocks to put the logic based on the outcome. I think it's pretty neat. Okay, that's it. It was short and I hope informative. I hope you learned something new. If you ever have any questions, please type them in a comment and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. This was Apia Fridays, session number 30. I was Roman. I was happy that you have been watching. Please consider subscription and like. And as always, I wish you happy automation. <laughs>